Yahweh's seven feasts represent God's appointed times. The word feast in Hebrew actually means appointed time. When God gave the Israelites the law, as part of the law, he had seven feasts to be celebrated annually. These feasts represented things that the Israelites were to remember and they were indicators of what God was going to do in the future. The first four feasts of Yahweh were fulfilled by Christ at his first coming. Those were the Feast of Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, and the Feast of Weeks. The final three feasts of Yahweh will be fulfilled by Christ at his second coming. These will be the Day of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. This presentation is about the next feast, the Feast of Trumpets. The next feast and the final three feasts of God are the Day of Trumpets. This will be when Christ appears and gathers up the elect. Then, ten days later, there will be the Day of Atonement, and this is when Christ judges his people. And then finally, the greatest feast of all, the Feast of Tabernacles, which will be the Wedding Supper of the Lamb. We've already seen at Christ's first coming how he fulfilled the first four feasts. Now we're going to look at the Feast of Trumpets, which is a day of trumpets, which will inaugurate the second coming of Christ, his second advent. Here's what it says in the Law of Numbers 29.1. On the first day, which is at the new moon of the seventh month, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. It is a day for you to sound the trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets, which signifies a sacred assembly of gathering of God's people, is found repeatedly in the prophets. Here in the prophet Joel we see, Blow the trumpet in Zion, declare a fast, a sacred assembly. Gather the people and consecrate the assembly. This is the Feast of Trumpets on the Day of the Lord. Here's what appears to be Christ's description at the time of the Feast of Trumpets as he describes his coming at the end of the age to his disciples. This is recorded in Matthew 24. It says, He will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, which is from the earth, and from one end of the heavens to the other. This would be from heaven, the resurrection of the dead. But you see, there's a trumpet call and the gathering of the elect, God's people. This is the Feast of Trumpets. Here's how the Apostle Paul writes about what appears to be the Feast of Trumpets. The Lord himself will come down from heaven, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. This is the resurrection of the dead. After that, we who are still alive and left will be caught up, this is the rapture, with them in the clouds, and we will meet the Lord in the air. So at the trumpet call, God will gather up his elect, the resurrection of the dead and the rapture of the living, at the last trumpet, the feast of trumpets. It is the last trumpet, the day of trumpets, which inaugurate the Feast of Trumpets and the final three feasts of God. Here's how Paul seems to write about this last trumpet. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. Paul seems to be indicating that the dead and the living will both be changed at the same time. This would be the resurrection and the rapture of God's people. Here's how we see the Feast of Trumpets and the last trumpet identified in Revelation 11 by Apostle John. He said the seventh angel sounded his trumpet, which is the seventh trumpet and the last trumpet. And he said that there would be loud voices in heaven which said the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and Christ and he will reign forever and ever. So at the last trumpet, the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ. In other words, the kingdom of God will have come on earth. 
This would be right after the Great Tribulation, when Christ returns and establishes his kingdom. That's when the last trumpet sounds, and God gathers up the elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. When Christ was telling his disciples about his return at the end of the age, he used a very unusual uh, description, at least an unusual description for us today. He said, no man knows the day or the hour. When Christ used the expression, no man knows the day or the hour, he was actually using a Hebrew idiom that was used to describe the Feast of Trumpets. This no man knows the day or the hour was used for the Feast of Trumpets because the Feast of Trumpets starts on the very first day of the month at the new moon. Two priests had to witness the new moon and signal the trumpets in the temple and that they would sound the trumpets. But if it was dark or overcast, the priests would not be able to see the new moon and therefore no one would know the exact day or the hour of the Feast of Trumpets. The Feasts of God, which identify the appointed times of God, as we've seen in the first advent of Christ, and as we know, undoubtedly will see with the second advent of Christ, when he fulfills the final three feasts, starting with the Feast of Trumpets. If we understood what the feasts meant in the Old Testament, and then have seen how Christ fulfilled the first four feasts, we would probably have a greater understanding of what's ahead. One of the reasons that Christianity, the organized Christian church, has had difficulty understanding about the last days and the time of the end and the events leading up to the return of the Messiah called the Christ is because they've put aside the Old Testament. They've forgotten about things like the Sabbath. They've forgotten things like the Feasts of God and their significance to prophecy and God's final plan. 